Lord, satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Hello and welcome to Worship at Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. My name is Jeff Schlesinger and I serve as pastor to the two congregations that make up Heart of Illinois Lutheran, Manuel Lutheran Church, which is south of Compton, Illinois, which is where I stand right now, and First Lutheran Church, which is in Lee, Illinois. We're so glad that you found our devotional worship video and are, are excited that you are joining us. We do invite you to join us in person if you feel comfortable doing so. And we gather at Emmanuel each week at 8.30 um, and at first at 10.30 uh, every Sunday morning. These uh, devotional videos are put out each Sunday early in the morning as well. Uh, however you can uh, tune in with us, we'd love uh, to have uh, you as part of our worshiping community. Again, thanks for joining us. We continue the service with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Brothers and sisters, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. I don't want a king. There's pretty much nothing in me that would desire to have a king. You see, under a king, rules, laws, are made not because of ideas or compassion or, or care for others, but, but they're made for whatever reason the king chooses. Furthermore, the, the king can make a command, and, and it must be followed, whatever the king desires. Under a king, the king is the ultimate judge. The king has the power to condemn and to execute for whatever reason the king chooses. Under a king, there is no ownership but the king's. The king owns all the land and everything in the kingdom. Everybody else is but a user or a renter uh, who has that stuff. Oh, it, the king's bound, uh, kingdom is bound by uh, borders, but everything within those borders belongs to the king. And and what gives the king a right to be king? What what are the king's credentials? Well, because they were born into the right family. Or if that's not why they're the king, it's it's because there was a military coup and and another family took over the king. So the reason a king is a king because of birth or because of military might. Neither of the reasons that I would want to put somebody in leadership. Having a king is in no way appealing to me, and it's probably not appealing to you either, if you're an American listening to this, or many other parts of the world. For this country was formed by a rebellion of the very thing, of being ruled by a king. It is on this rebellion that this nation was founded, and it's on this anti-king sentiment that our ruling document, the Constitution, was penned. That said, today is Christ the King Sunday. Today is the Sunday that I'm reminded, you're reminded, we're all reminded, that we indeed do have a king. We spend much of the church year speaking of Jesus in different ways, as our teacher and our example. We sing songs like, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. We, we speak of Jesus as our friend and our companion. And we sing things like, what a friend we have in Jesus. We speak of Jesus as our caregiver, our healer, our provider. We speak of Jesus as our sacrificial lamb and our savior. In the cross of Christ I glory, we, we sing every Lenten season. But today is the one day set aside in the church year, this last day of the church year, we remember Christ as our King. Oh, next week as we prepare uh, to, to welcome our newborn uh, Messiah in the manger, Christ among us, we will go back to thinking of Jesus as one among us. But today we set aside to reserve as the day that we remember as Christ as our King. Yes, Jesus is the one who comes among us and is one of us, but Jesus... Today, we remember, is also something very other than and something very much above us. There is a movement within liturgical language to change much of our words in the liturgy from kingdom to kin 
dum. That is without the G. You see the difference? Kin as in family. The idea is that, that Jesus came to form us into a new family, a family of God. While the word king can be troubling due to the dictatorial aspect of kingship. There is merit to this idea. But we must not, and today specifically we remember that, we must not allow the word king and kingdom to disappear altogether. For then we will lose the sovereignty, the otherness, the divinity of Jesus. As much as I don't want to have a king, Jesus is the king that is worthy of worship of my worship and my praise and my devotion. There is no one on this earth whom I would want to sub submit to as my king. But Jesus, Jesus is worthy of that title in my life and in your life, brothers and sisters. Socrates is famous for saying, I believe in the truth. I will follow the truth wherever it may lead me. As Christians, on this Christ the King Sunday, we say, we believe in Jesus as our King, and we will follow Him wherever He may lead us. Now, normally, my sermon comes after the reading of our scripture lessons, and it's a reflection on those lessons. But today, I offer these words first, not as a reflection on the lessons, but as an introduction of the lessons. You see, I want you to hear the lessons and the words that they give so that you can reflect on what it means that Jesus is your King. As you hear the lessons today, listen to hear how Jesus is both the Ancient One, yet the Human One among us. Listen to hear how Jesus is worshipped not only by humanity, but by creation itself, as the seas give him praise. Listen to hear how Jesus is the eternal King, who was, who is, and who is to come. Listen to hear how Jesus' kingdom is not marked by physical boundaries. And listen to hear how Jesus himself is the truth. Here now, the readings for this Christ the King Sunday. I read all the lessons on this day. Our first lesson is from the seventh chapter of Daniel. Part of Daniel's apocalypse, the prophecy of the expected Messiah. As I watched, thrones were set in place. And the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm today is the 93rd psalm. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. 
mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Our second lesson is from Revelation, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Here ends the second lesson. And our gospel today is from the 18th chapter of John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Judeans? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Judean, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Judeans. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Let us continue with the song of the day. Come, thou almighty King. Come, thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all-glorious, or all-victorious, come and reign over us, Ancient of Days. Come thou incarnate word, merciful mighty Lord, our prayer attend. Come and thy people bless, and give thy word success, and let thy righteousness on us descend. Come, holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear. In this glad hour, thou who almighty art, rule now in every heart, never from us depart, spirit of power. To the great one in three, eternal praises be, and evermore, thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore. 
We are made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In response to Christ, who is our good King, I invite all of you to consider making an offering to the ministry of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. Easiest way to do so is using electronic or mail. Uh, if you are coming to in-person worship, we do have a basket at the entrance as you come in. Thank you to all who have been consistent with your offerings so our mission can stay viable during this time. Thank you also to those who have used their time and talents uh, to make their service possible. Uh, thank you to Stephen Simpson, who led us in singing, as well as Fran Sellers, who led our canticle of praise. Special thanks to Sarah and Ron, our accompanist extraordinaire. Our calendar is on the screen now. Uh, after worship today, at first, there'll be a joint council meeting of the two church councils. And then following that, the first council will have their regularly scheduled meeting. Please note that there is no Bible study this week. On Wednesday this week, we will have a Thanksgiving Eve service, a short prayer service. Please come and join us at Emmanuel. That will not be uh, broadcast online. Uh, Advent is right around the corner. In fact, it begins next Sunday. Uh, during Advent, there's two opportunities for you, special opportunities for you. Uh, on Wednesdays during Advent, we'll have Advent Vesper services, uh, which will include holding evening prayer. And then the Synod, uh, Northern Illinois Synod Creation Care Committee, is putting out daily devotions uh, that will be available online for you to view. Just short little five-minute uh, clips. Uh, we'll get that link to you, and we'll post that on our Facebook site and our websites as soon as we have those available. Those will begin on December 1st and go through Christmas Day. And finally, uh, the Nice Center is uh, having its Christmas room this year. You see on the screen all the things uh, that they are requesting for that room. This list is also available on our electronic announcements, our electronic weekly announcements will be in our newsletter and so on. Please uh, check those out so you can share with those in me. That is all the announcements I have at this time. We continue the service with the prayers and benediction. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And as we enter the prayers of intercession, I will conclude each petition with the words, God in your mercy, and your response is, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things, longing for the freedom to flourish, from the ancient trees and wild grasses to the endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person or online, and for all who are sick and suffering. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.